Welcome, everybody. It's been a long time coming. World Health Organization video number two. You watched number one. If you have not watched number one, go watch it because we talk about what the World Health Organization is doing in the realm of comprehensive sex ed. This video is about what's happening in the United States, who's doing it. It's already here, folks. So I'm just going to give you a couple of reminders. Throw this on the screen. Remember, the World Health Organization with UNESCO drafted a baseline for curriculum for kids around the world in conjunction with Planned Parenthood. Why is Planned Parenthood always involved in in targeting children? Because there's money involved. You'll see later that later on children get referred back to Planned Parenthood. All right. Uh, The Christian Institute, I'm going to throw this up to you just to remind you, this was in the first video. Uh, The World Health Organization wants kids under four to be taught about masturbation and gender identity. That was the 6th of May, 2020, in the middle of COVID. Okay, These, These are facts. I want to read this to you real quick. And you need to pay attention to these organizations. The International Technical Guidance on Sexuality Education for the World's Children. That was drafted by the WHO with Planned Parent at UNESCO, and then, of course, they brought the CDC in and a very important organization called SICUS, S-I-E-C-U-S, a U.S. education government organization that helped draft these curriculum. Now, these curriculum are comprised of books. So the CSE, the Comprehensive Sex Ed Mindset, is Comprehensive Sex Ed. That sounds very good, but what's in it? We're going to unveil that to you here real quick. Let me read to you a quote from UNESCO, which is the United Nations that helped draft this curriculum that's in the United States. Okay, quote, quote from them. Young people want and need sexuality and sexual health information as early as comprehensively possible. That's debatable. Do young people want sexuality? Young people meaning kindergartners, right? Children should have agency in their own sexual practices and relationships. No, they should not. A four, five, six, ten-year-old shouldn't have agency on what they want to do sexually. The parents have agency, of course, not to exploit or abuse the child, but to protect the child. Comprehensive sexuality education can help children form respectful and healthy relationship with sexual partners. That is exactly what we do not want. We do not want children to have sexual relationship with sexual partners. This is straight from UNESCO, the United Nations. This curriculum is in 29 states of the United States. It is the law mandatory in two of the 29 states, and the other 27 are taking it to their floor to vote on making it mandatory in public schools. I continue to quote from the WHO, children have sexual feelings even as early as infancy. The WHO, quote, between the second and third year of their lives, They discovered the physical difference between men and women. Of course they do. That doesn't mean you need to exploit them. During this time, children start to discover their own bodies, early childhood masturbation. Pause. I've got young kids under five. No, they do not discover masturbation. You're pushing this on them in the classroom. And if a child were to discover that, that is a parental conversation at home to guide and steer that child, not to indoctrinate and manipulate that child in the classroom, right? And they may also try to examine the bodies of their friends. We do not want that. All right. Progressive groups, including Planned Parenthood, collaborated on a bill in California called AB 329. Governor Newsom signed this thing into law. Okay. It is called the the health education framework in California. So please, now that your kids are going to go back to school, you need to take these sizzle words, health education framework, comprehensive sex ed, some of these other technical guidance to sexuality. And you have to go ask your principals, are we teaching this curriculum? Are we endorsing this curriculum? In California, it's mandatory throughout public schools. In Washington State, Governor Inslee, on the 27th of March this year, in the middle of COVID, when parents could not protest, Signed this into law in Washington state. It's in 29 states. The other states are voting on it to become legal. Texas, they're voting on this the 2nd of September. It would be the first time in two decades that there's a a sex ed reform in Texas. And they want to push this curriculum into Texas. Wake up. You better show up, Texas, and vote against this. You do not want this in your kid's classroom. Lawmakers create the California Healthy Youth Act. It sounds so good, guys. 
Don't be duped by the names and the banners. They fly these things normally in under the LBGTQ movement because politicians are scared to death to vote against anything LBGTQ. And it's not fair to the LBGTQ uh, community either. I'm not a hypocrite. They don't endorse this. I've spoken to many of their members. They don't endorse exploiting children this way in the classroom. So so look out for State Bill 329 in California, State, State Bill 5395 in Washington. Governor Inslee, you signed that bill when parents were in lockdown. Why then? Why when they were in lockdown? Okay. So let's talk about the books inside the curriculum. What, is, what are your child actually being taught in the classroom in the United States, 29 states? And we will reveal the list of the states that have received funding for this already. And remember, Planned Parenthood is driving the train on this thing. Okay. Uh, it's called the Comprehensive Sex Ed. Here are the books. What's Happening to My Body for Boys? What's Happening to My Body for Girls? Changing You is for Kindergarten through Third Grade. It's a Guide to Sexuality. Kindergarten, Guide to Sexuality. And I'm going to quote for, for you from the curriculum so you see what's in it, okay? Sex, Puberty, and Stuff is another book. The Health Education Framework, Healthy Gender Development, and then, of course, the, the great book in this movement internationally, this book. It is perfectly normal. We'll put that on the screen. No, it's not perfectly normal. And this book is for 10-year-olds. And let me tell you something. It's porn what's in this book. It is porn. It's illustrated. It's animated. But it's pornography. Too much, too soon in a, in a, in a young mind, all right, corruptible mind, it's pornography, all right? They hail this book as their grand champion, all right? So let's dive into some of the things that's happened because because people say, Yaku, where are your facts? Is there any media on this? Let's let's look at the Daily Signal. We're gonna hold these up for you. The Daily Signal says California implements extreme new sex ed curriculum. This is eleven months ago. California Board of Education, and please, you've got to go to your boards of education and ask them to stop exploiting children. This is grooming in the classroom. Nobody worth their salt in in the anti-sex trafficking movement, right, will disagree that this is desensitization. This is how you groom kids in a classroom. This is how you plant a seed, which is a weed, by the way, and weeds grow in any garden, okay? You plant a seed of sex, and it's toward it. It's, it's, It's pushing it to gender neutrality, moral fluidity, right, early sexual experimentation and it corrupts your child and it does absolutely make your child a softer target online for predators there's no question about it okay many doctors have gone against these states boards of education and said come on you're corrupting the youth they ignore them okay let's look at mainstream media here this is protest in california throw this up for you okay that is a picture of a little girl named angie she's four California's new sex ed guidelines encourage teachers to talk to students about gender identity and masturbation. Critics say the new guidelines are an assault on parental rights and expose children to ideas about sexuality. Remember, the World Health Organization said the child should have agency over their sexual activity. All right. This child is saying, protect my innocence and my childhood. Parents did show up in California, but it was a little short and a little bit too late. You need to fight. California, you got to fight. Washington, you got to fight. Governor Inslee and Newsom, you need to recalibrate. You're off on this. You're literally exploiting children. This is not good, okay? The, the, the health boards and state boards of education, you need to get your minds right. The Federalist, throw that up for you. The Federalist writes the following. Another reason to ditch the World Health Organization is its shocking sex propaganda for kids. The World Health Organization is an avid supporter of the so-called children's sexual rights movement, which sexualizes kids. And then they say President Trump was right to defund them. If you look at that picture the Federalist had up there, in the classroom, you get a little stick man figure and you got to cut him in and you got to pick the, the gender of the child. It's called the gender bread man. And then you pick the sexual organ, and you can change it day to day. Sick. They push fluidity. They push moral fluidity. They're anti-God. They're anti-country. They're anti-family. They're anti-father stay home. right? And it's all about having kids that are dysfunctional. And many of you say, Yaku, you're conservative. You only work with conservatives. No. 
This is the Los Angeles Times. We do not politicize this issue, okay? Los Angeles Times writes, Controversial sex education framework for California approved despite protest. Okay? Parents do not stand for this, but the lawmakers didn't listen. Okay? This parent says too much too soon. The framework is mind-corrupting. Uh, AB 329 is bad law. Um, the framework is sick, twisted. Okay? Now let me quote from the curriculum for you. Now there's many, of course. Now remember, four and up. Four, ten, and then of course middle school and high school. So I'm quoting from the curriculum for you. Almost everyone, and this is for under 10-year-olds, okay? Almost everyone has sexual fantasies. Pause. Why do you need to talk to a child under the age of 10 about sexual fantasies? There's adult married couples that do not engage in role play and, and, and these kind of things, okay? We may have them while we're masturbating and at other times too. Now remember, they're introducing masturbation early. Now they're talking about you need to have fantasies while you masturbate. Where do you think that's going to lead? That's going to lead to pornography, 100%, because the child is going to research sexual fantasies on YouTube, on Google. And what do you think Pornhub is going to push to them? One of our strongest cases we have at the moment is a child that got hooked on porn and is trafficked through an Xbox game with online live play and live chat. Okay, sexual fantasies can be rich and, and a varied way of experimenting with your sexual self. They're glorifying sexual fantasies to kids under under 10. Same curriculum, okay, has this in it. Now, I'm going to warn you, this is, this is controversial, okay? This is shocking and it's graphic. But they're teaching your child in the classroom sexual slang for women's body parts. Derogatory language to women's body parts. Talking dirty bedroom talk that I would argue most wives would slap their husbands, okay, if they did that, right? They go further. They ask, is masturbation a sin or mor morally wrong? They say one person's idea of what's sinful or morally wrong may be quite different from another person's. No, morality is not fluid. You're pushing fluid, fluidity and morality. Nowadays, most people do not think masturbation is morally wrong or sinful, Personally, they don't, they don't think so either. They say in the past, many religions held masturbation as a sin. Now they bring religion into it. They pick one religion, though. They could have picked all of the religions because sexual immorality is in all walks of life. Child sex trafficking doesn't profile gender, race, class, socioeconomic status, but they pick the Catholic religion. Why? Because society has been desensitized to what has happened in the Catholic Church, but it happens everywhere. But here's what they're saying. Catholic religion's official point of view holds that masturbation is a sin. This does not mean that the Catholics or even Catholic priests feel this way. Okay? Now you got a problem because now they're telling the child the church thinks it's a problem, but the priest doesn't. Think about the, the MO here, okay? If you're bothered, I'm quoting, guys, if you're bothered by the notion that masturbation may be sinful or morally wrong, perhaps you should have a talk with your priest. Why not a talk with your parent? Why are you teaching the child masturbation in the classroom and then telling him his priest doesn't think it's a problem, but he, he can go talk to his priest? It goes further. They have testimonials in this curriculum. I'm going to read a part of a testimony to you. I will not read the whole thing because it's so graphic. Some men were interviewed and described orgasms as great. So this is a testimony about orgasm. One man said it perfectly. They say, well, it feels like there's some sort of a neat sensation in my genitals that builds and goes off. And I'm going to pause there. He then gets graphic on ejaculation. Okay. And then he, and he ends with this. Afterwards, I feel a tingling and then relaxed all over, says Will age 46. And I'm going to pause. Why? And I'm going to keep it up. Why do we have a testimony from a 46-year-old man to a child under 10 about his orgasmic experiences? you got to step up, parents. It's time to take this fight to the school boards. There's more things coming. We're going to talk to you about Planned Parenthood passing secret abortion bills. We're going to talk about California passing a, a transgender equity fund for sterilization of children. We're going to talk about what's happening at Senate level. Um, there's a lot more we're going to bring you. And we are going to post this list on a, on a separate post. We're going to post the list of the 29 states that currently have CSE in it. Fight for the children. Your voice is so important. God bless you.